Hello, fellow HubSpotters. This is Katie Shuley with Kiwi Creative, and today we're going to be talking about HubSpot's Breeze AI tools, but more specifically, Breeze Copilot. Now, Breeze Copilot is the conversational AI tool that's baked right into your HubSpot portal. You can think of it as your very own personal ChatGPT that has connections to all of your HubSpot data and tools. Now, because Copilot is one of the more open-ended tools of the Breeze platform, people find it a little tricky to use. And much like its predecessor, ChatSpot, which had to walk so that Copilot could run, you can let it do just about anything with the right prompt. Now, there are caveats to this. You can't ask Copilot to skirt around tier level features, for example. So if you ask it to create an attribution report when you're not an enterprise customer, it won't be able to execute on that task. But anyone from starter all the way up to enterprise can enjoy and use Copilot pretty effectively. Regardless of your tier level, it does a lot more than you think it can. Again, like ChatGPT, with the right prompts, it can support sales teams with prospect research, uh, research for marketers or content drafting. Admins can use it to cleanse your data. But because a lot of those are a little bit more broad, people get stuck on what that actually means and what they can actually do with it. So because it's a little more open-ended and feels a little bit more like a vague nicety in your portal, we wanted to give you some more concrete examples of how you can use Copilot in your daily tasks. So with that in mind, in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to set up the background information in your HubSpot portal to ensure that Copilot is supported. I'm going to give you a couple of strategic considerations for improving your Copilot experience, including how to prompt it properly. And finally, I'm gonna give you three Yes, three specific examples of how you could use Copilot to make your life easier in your day-to-day. -day. Now, one little disclaimer before we get started. Copilot is just one of dozens of Breeze AI tools that are in varying stages of live features, public betas, and private betas. So make sure you're opted into HubSpot's beta terms and keep an eye out for changes and updates regularly. For more information on Breeze Copilot and all of the other HubSpot AI tools available in your platform, be sure to check out our AI guide linked below in the description. Now, let's get into the good stuff. Before we get into the nitty gritty details of setting up Breeze AI in your portal, I want to give a giant disclaimer, okay? We are super smart HubSpotters, we are not legal experts. Should you have questions regarding the legality of using AI in your portal, questions about the ethics or other implications, please refer to HubSpot's documentation directly. I'm gonna link a couple articles below about AI ethics and third-party data usage to ensure you have the information you need to go to your legal experts or otherwise. So make sure you refer to that first should you have any questions. All right, folks, I am in our HubSpot demo portal right now. So this interface might be a little bit different, a little wonky, not what you're used to, and that's okay. Premise is still the same. If you would like to utilize Breeze Copilot or any Breeze AI tool for that matter, your functionality for AI must be turned on and set up. To do this, you have to be a super admin. Super admins are the only folks that have the user permission level needed to turn on, off, or modify any of your AI functionality settings. So if you head up here to your gear icon for your settings, head over to account management and AI, you'll see these two tabs here, access and data sources. To turn on AI, like we have here, you gotta make sure this grayed out bar is no longer grayed out, right? We're gonna turn this on. They'll all look like this at first, but at bare minimum to access Breeze AI at all, give users access to generative AI tools and features must be on. We'll talk about this in a second. For Copilot, like we're gonna talk about, this has to be turned on. Now, because this is a beta, you have to make sure that you are opted into HubSpot's beta terms. You can do so down here, okay? So yay, we turn these on, right? We now have access to these AI features. But, understandably so, people get hung up on some of the language and uh, features down here. So we're gonna talk about those. Like I said, in my disclaimer, please default to all of HubSpot's language disclaimers, privacy settings, right? but people get hung up on this language a lot right here. Allow all users in your account access to tools and features, okay? Much like in my introduction when I talked about how Copilot can't skirt around tier level features, 
Copilot and other generative AI tools within your HubSpot portal can't skirt around permission levels and things of that sort either. So for example, if you were a user that did not have access to particular CRM data, but you asked Copilot to provide that CRM data, Copilot could not do that because you do not have the proper permission set. Okay, so keep that in mind if you're ever concerned about someone going to the co-pilot and saying, delete all my CRM data, <laughs> right? Can't do it. So with that in mind, some of these other items, play with it is my recommendation, right? If you have a particular use case in mind for some of the AI tools within HubSpot, turn some of these off and back on after testing and prompting. So keep them off at first, go test the tools, not liking what you're getting, come back here, turn it on, see what happens, okay? Just so that you can get a feel for what happens when you have them on versus off. Especially if you have a specific use case, like for example, maybe you wanted to create an auto-generated reply or a summary of a call. If you don't have customer conversation data turned on, you're not gonna be able to do that with any of the generative AI features in HubSpot. So keep that in mind. There are still use cases to have these things turned off, right? So for example, maybe like we have, we have files data turned off. Maybe you have some private files on your HubSpot portal and you really don't want AI to crawl it or have that information uh, shared, right? Totally fine, keep it turned off. Obviously they don't always recommend having any sensitive data saved in your files, but if you don't want it to have access, sure, that's fine. Now, all these things are turned on. We now have access to this, yay. Next thing, data sources. This is critical. This is basically the foundation for ensuring all of the AI tools have what they need to produce answers that you want, right? So if you don't have your ideal customer profile filled out, but you're hoping to have really good research for your sales team to use for prospecting, you're probably not gonna get really great results, okay? So ensure all this is filled out. You probably have all of this already. Your brand kits, well, should be already set up, right? But a lot of this other information is very basic stuff that you probably already have in your marketing strategy or marketing plans for the year. So all you have to do is make sure that it's copied over for the AI tools to use, all right? So for example, products and services, make sure your value prop is in here. Make sure that your pain points are in here. This will help if it's you're asking it to you know, help you write for something or you're really trying to come up with a um, good strategy for particular sales call, okay? Making sure all this information is filled out appropriately will make sure that the AI is giving you good responses. Now that we have everything set up in the back end of your portal, let's talk through some strategic considerations for improving your Copilot experience. And really the biggest thing I'm gonna talk about is prompting. So if you're familiar with conversational AI and generative AI and you feel good about prompting, you can skip this, but feel free to stick around if you want some extra tips. The biggest piece of advice I can offer about prompting is to treat Copilot more like somebody who's been around at your company for three days rather than someone who's been around for a decade. You are probably going to have to give a lot more background information, which we already started with that intel that we gave on the back end, but give it a little bit more back end, give it a little bit more time, and iterate with it right? Start a little bit smaller, give it bite-sized pieces, and then build up from there. The nice thing is that Copilot comes with some pre-built prompts that really start with this type of attitude, right? So if you wanted to summarize something, if you wanted to generate something, what have you, you can start with one of these prompts to begin with, right? So if you wanted to generate some blog ideas, okay, it's going to pop up with this prompt and you can go ahead and add in some intel and see what it says in response. Then start iterating. Don't worry about writing these super long, crazy detailed prompts because sometimes it can just confuse the AI more than anything. Stick with these pre-built ones and stick with shorter iterative processes to ensure that the things that you're getting back from the AI tool actually make a difference. Okay, now it's time for the good stuff. And this is just one of the three ways I'm going to show you how to practically use Copilot. Now, the first way, SEO research. Pause. No, this does not replace traditional SEO experts or tools like SE Ranking or SEMrush or otherwise. However, for smaller teams who might be strapped for resources 
or those who just don't know much about SEO in general and don't have the ability to reach out to these experts, Copilot can be a great starting point and most of the responses are pretty accurate and would probably be backed up by any SEO expert. So I went ahead and started prompting. I asked it to generate a list of SEO keywords that a tech marketing agency could target and it came up with them. Great ones actually, long tail with specific descriptions as to why we might wanna target them. Like, hey, targets tech companies interested in leveraging content marketing to boost their brand visibility. That's fantastic. It gives you context. It's not just regurgitated AI crap. <laughs> I went further and I asked it, hey, what questions are people searching for that involve those keywords? Now granted, Copilot kinda got a little questioning here. So don't get frustrated with Copilot if it doesn't get right the first time. Just go ahead and continue prompting it until it gets it right. So it did. It came back with 10 questions and they're all really valid. How can tech firms improve lead generation? What are the best practices for B2B tech marketing? What innovative marketing techniques work for technology brands? What are the latest trends in social media marketing for tech? All questions that I think are very much likely search, real search intent, right? Somebody might actually be looking for these questions. With that in mind, I asked, all right, how can I incorporate that in my content? And it gave, albeit vague, but still, if somebody's not versed in SEO, this is really helpful. Use the questions as headings or subheadings to structure your content. If somebody's not familiar with Google's algorithm or any of the search algorithms for that matter, they may not understand why that is, but the fact that it's giving that context is incredibly helpful. I went one step further and I even asked it, hey, we have great blog traffic, so can you come up with a few blogs that help answer these questions? Look at all those. Titles with short descriptions, and you can continue prompting. While I recommend using the Breeze AI blog generator rather than using Copilot to generate full blogs, this could still be taken further, and you can ask for outlines or full blog posts based on these topics. But for people who may not have access to SEO resources, this is an awesome way to use Copilot on a day-to-day -day basis. Another really practical way that you can use Copilot is to use it as a task management system of sorts, and just to help you prioritize your day. So I'm kind of pretending that I'm a salesperson here. Maybe I'm not super versed in HubSpot or I'm newer with HubSpot, and I just want to make sure that I'm not trying to dig for things that I don't need to. So I just went into Copilot and I asked it to show me a list of open deals without any activity in the last week. I just want to see who I should be following up with, who should be my priority. We've got 10 people here. It's showing the deal stage and the last activity date. Now, obviously, this is the demo portal. So a reminder, the activity date is going to be a little weird. But we've got a couple of deals here who are actually in the deal stage contract sent. So I probably want to follow up with these guys. But let's take a look at these actual contacts. Now you can go directly into the records themselves from this search, which is really cool. I can then search down here and, oh, look, I made a note for myself. So don't follow up with Damien because he's gonna get back to us in March. All right, well, I don't have to do anything there. No biggie. Well, what about our friend Jacqueline here? Let's go take a look at her. Well, let's see. Well, the last time we had a conversation was when Wilbur logged a call. Looks like that's our demo guy. And after that, we have the contract, but no intel. So I kind of want to follow up with Jacqueline. I need some help drafting an email. So I asked it to do so. Can you give me some email copy for sending to those contacts that are in the contract stage? And it did just that. Now, obviously, like most AI, you want to tweak and make sure that it's human and doesn't sound too fluffy like other AI language. But it gives me start, right? I could copy and paste this into my email. Or I went down even further and I asked it to make me a task. Especially if I don't want to follow up with Jacqueline right away, this is a great way to keep me on target and on track. I can rename this task, I can associate it with that particular deal if I wanted to, or I can associate it across all of the deals related to those contracts. If I wanted to, I can set a due date for a different day, and I could even copy and paste that email that it provided to me within the system. The final practical way that you can use Copilot is as a training tool and maybe even as your very own personal table of contents for knowledge base articles. Copilot is great for helping you sort through the noise. We know there's a ton of support articles out there, community posts, and so much more that can teach you how to utilize HubSpot, but it can be a little overwhelming. So let's say I'm a new user and I'm not super familiar with the workflow feature. I've gone ahead and asked Copilot to generate a workflow for me. Let's say that my boss asked me to make one to create a task whenever somebody enters the lifecycle stage MQL. 
I'm not really sure how to do that. So I've gone ahead and asked it and it created it for me. Let's go over to that workflow now. It's already started everything. Now there's some missing information because I didn't give it too, too much here. So if I wanted to, I can go in and I can add the task title and more details here as well. But I'm still feeling unsure. And my boss actually told me that we're supposed to have a time delay. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here and collaborate with Copilot. Now I went through and I asked, how do I add a delay action in a workflow? And Copilot has given me step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this. Add the delay action. In the workflow editor, click the plus. All right, well, let's click here. Oh, delay and delay type. Oh, wow, okay, this is a lot easier than I thought. Now, obviously, a lot of these HubSpot tools can be self-explanatory. But again, for new users, this is incredibly helpful. And even people who are super seasoned vets, if you're unsure about something or you're not quite sure where something's at anymore because it may have moved in the interface or what have you, you can ask Copilot and it will find it for you. So there you have it. Three incredibly practical ways that you can start utilizing Copilot in your day-to-day -day tasks. You're by no means obligated to use my examples as your jumping off point, but at least it gets you started. Plus, there's a lot of pre-baked prompts at your disposal as well, so don't forget about those. And if you have additional questions or want some more guidance surrounding Breeze AI and Breeze Copilot in particular, make sure to check out our guide linked in the description below. We're gonna have all of those links related to HubSpot's AI ethics as well. With that in mind, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our other HubSpot helper videos and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Need custom recommendations for your HubSpot portal? Check out our HubSpot action plan today.